Hello everyone, today I will show you how to compute the demand forces of response spectrum analysis using hand calculation and I will compare my result to ETAP's results. Going to this Microsoft Word, as shown here, we need to use these equations to compute the response quantities. The first equation shows the equivalent static force and the second equation is used to compute model displacement. We need the model participation factor, the mass matrix, mode shape, and acceleration, and this D means the deformation spectrum, which is equal to acceleration divided by the natural frequency. I have shown you before how to compute the model participation factor. In this video, you may check it again. However, I have obtained the mode shapes with three numbers after the digit, and we need to include more numbers in order to obtain more accurate results. I will go to ETAPS and I will export the mod shapes again. And diaphragm center of mass displacement. Check model here, the model load case. And you should click here show and format it in order to obtain more accurate results. And export to Excel. Now we have the new results which have many number after the comma and I have copied this value to this sheet, the one we have prepared previously for computing the model participation factor as shown here. And going to this sheet which I have used to compute the demand forces of response spectrum analysis, First, we need to know which mode we want to use. I will use the same mode that I have used before to compute the model participation factor, which are a translational mode in the X direction. I'm using mode number 1, 4, 6, 9, 12, and 14. And they have totally a mass participation equal to 88%. Therefore, we need first to know the period of each mode. And here the natural frequency is just equal to 2 pi over the period. And for this one we need to know the acceleration which is here in this equation A. Here I name it SA, don't be confused about it, it's just the same. We need to pick the acceleration value from the design spectrum. The one I have defined previously inside ETAPS. This one, this curve. The idea here is to read the acceleration based on the natural period. For example, at period of 6.45 seconds, we need to come to here and we read the acceleration which is almost equal to 0.04 multiplied by gravity. And the spectral displacement is equal to acceleration divided by natural frequency. And those are the participation factors that I have computed before in this sheet. And finally, the model amplitude is equal to participation factor multiplied by spectral displacement. In this table, I have put the normalized mode and here the weight of each story. And here I have computed the response of the first mode. For example, the story displacement here is equal to the mode shape multiplied by participation factor multiplied by the spectral displacement. Please make sure about the units. And in the same way I compute the value for other cells. Here the mode shape and here the story displacement of mode number one. The drift ratio is just the difference of displacement divided by story height. And since I'm using millimeter I should divide by story height that have a unit of millimeter. And regarding the story forces, we need to use this equation, which is equal to mode shape multiplied by participation factor, by story weight, and multiplied by acceleration. You should notice that I'm not using gravity because gravity is already included here in story weight. Because we need to use mass here in this equation, but I'm using weight, therefore gravity is already included in the weight. And in the same way we compute the other forces. 
Now story shear is just equal to the summation of forces as shown in this cell. And this is how story shear looks like for the first mode of course. And the story overturning moment is equal to the story shear multiplied by story height plus the moment above that story. And I have used the same computation for mode number 4. Of course you need to use mode number 4 here. And the mass participation for mode number 4. And I just use the same formulation that I have shown you before. Finally we need to combine the result using a combination rule. I'm using here SRSS which means square root of sum of the squares while in ETAPS I'm using CQC. Let me go to response spectrum analysis load case. As shown here I'm using CQC but we can use SRSS and I'm using here SRSS because it's more easier to be applied. What we need to do is just take the square root of the values as shown here. This is for story displacement. We just do the same for drift ratio, for story forces, story shear and overturning moment. And finally we have this result. Those are the final results obtained from response spectrum analysis. Now let's check if we have compute them correctly. I will go to ETAPS and from display story response plots. I will use the diaphragm center of mass displacement and I will choose the load case as response spectrum analysis in the X direction. Just copy the results from here to the Excel. As shown here this figure our hand calculation and ETAPS results match. And for drift ratio. And in the same way, just copy the values here and copy to Excel. Story shears now. This one I will export it to Excel because we have two location top and bottom. And I will use the top values. Actually they are just the same. And lastly we need to obtain the story over turning moment. Of course we need the moment around the y-axis because the force is applied in the x-direction. Therefore this is the final answer as shown here. We have a minor difference in drift and overturning moment and of course this is because we are just including the first six translational modes while in ETAPS there is more modes included in the analysis. Also due to the combination rule we are using SRSS while in ETAPS we are using CQC. And this is the end of this video and please continue the next one.